Well, welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trout Flies. Today we're going to be doing my version of a little olive nymph, one that I particularly like to use during the fall months. So let's get started. So this is the uh, hook that we're going to be using for my uh, little olive nymph. Now the reason I have two hooks on here is to show you uh, how I arrived at using the top hook. The top hook is actually a size 16 wet fly hook, which is slightly shorter shanked than, than uh, the dry fly hooks. The bottom hook is the hook that I was using, which is a size 18 dry fly hook. You see the difference in one of the advantages of using the, uh, the size 16 wet fly hook. You, you have the exact same fly, but a considerably more uh, hooking gap. So I'm going to put one of these in the vise and we'll get started. Now I'm tying this a, a bead headed version which I really I really like and as we uh, go along I'm going to give you a little bit of a history of this fly. I started out uh, tying this years and years ago to use for the fall olive hatch now which is a very small fly. It's almost the size of the trico or the white wing blacks which run around size 24 so you you know you're looking at this and you're going well that's a lot bigger but what i found over the years was that subsurface the size of of these flies doesn't seem to matter quite as much for instance i started out tying uh, this nymph on a size 22 hook which was very successful i caught a lot of fish a lot of nice fish on it and I uh, decided to try it on a 20 and I had no drop off in success and I eventually went to a size 18 dry fly hook which I showed uh, uh, a few minutes ago and uh, this one imitates the size of that uh, number 18 dry fly hook exactly and I had no drop off in success with the 18. So I kept using the 18 and I decided to, to try this hook because of the increased gap. And this is working really well. This one has a bead on it. I would recommend tying some of these also without a bead. But let's get started. I'm using simply some golden olive thread. Uh, this is going to give some coloration to the body. Uh, we'll run that all the way back to the bend. And the, and the whole thing, basically, other than the thread and the bead, is made uh, from pheasant tail. So you could say technically this is a an olive pheasant tail nymph, right? But and that and that's fine. Uh, I just chose to do this because of the simplicity of making the fly out of pheasant tail. So I got a small clump of pheasant tail. And I'm going to attach that for the tail so that it's maybe two-thirds of the length of, of the of the shank there and we'll trap it with a couple of wraps of thread right here by the bend it's just like that that's all you need and take the thread back up near the bead and then we're going to wrap the uh, pheasant tail on just as you always would with just a few overhand wraps come up near the bead and just trap it right there and now we'll take the thread back toward the bend and then when we get there we're going to come back over itself up towards the thorax area so what i've done is i've added a little bit of olive color here to the body plus i've reinforced this pheasant tail so now we're going to make the wing case similar to, to the way uh, frank sawyer made his and his pheasant tail if you've ever seen that it's a very simple process we'll just trap this there take the thread back up near the bead fold it over trap it again bring the thread back behind that clump and one more time back and then take our thread through the thorax a little bit give that a little bit of color up near the bead and we tie it off there like this Pretty much all there is to it you can tie that down a little bit and since i forgot my whip finisher well we'll just 
do a uh, hand whip finish here and finish it off and that completes my little olive uh, nymph and just a little bit of uh, the history of this thing as I said before I, I kept uh, Upgrading the size on this from a 22, I ended up with an 18. This hook is the equivalent of an eight, of an 18. But and tie some of these without the bead. It makes it easier to fish uh, to upstream to rising fish. I give you just one example that of a of a memorable occurrence some years ago on the Manistee where I came upon upon a pod of uh, fish rising below a weed bed, they were taking the nymphs as they came out of the weed bed, and there was five or six trout kind of staggered out almost perfectly uh, for a fisherman, and I was down below it, and I had my little nymph, and I would drop it above the risers one at a time and uh, caught all of them on this little fly, but without a bead, and, and uh, they were all nice brown trout in the 12 to 15 inch range. So this is an example of what you can do with the unweighted version if you want to fish it to rising fish. So tie some of these up and enjoy your fishing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you the next time.